Welcome to this video about digital painting with Krita. I'm going to show you the new features that we have in Krita 5.2 in the latest release. We are going to be talking about the animation, the new brush editor, the new tools that are included in Krita, new color selector, and a lot of different things. Wow. Are you ready? Here we go. This is the new welcome screen. So you can just activate the news, the activate the news. Also, you have a lot of things related with the community and the manual in a very good place to be find it easily. Also, don't forget the Krita depends on your support. And as you can see, now this is empty because we start from scratch. But if you are working with Krita, probably you have something like this. Sometimes we want to get rid of some of them. Imagine I want to delete this from my recent images because I have finished this work. I make right click and then I forget testing landscape and right click forget cost. And imagine we want to get rid of all of images here. So I click here on click and done. If you go to the brush editor, you can see that if I go to the option sites, for example, these parameters have been changed in the order. So we have the pressure related, direction related, the rotation, what is random or not, and the special parameters that we have in Krita. This is because the brush editor has been recoded with lugger, which is a huge work and it will be improving the way that another parameters interact with the UI and plugins or wherever. And we can do a lot more things with them. Impressive, expect more things in the future. And now let me show you a feature that I have been expecting for a long time. If I click here, now you can see how we have the rotation widget to modify the rotation for the brush tape. Wow, impressive. So if I select a brush like this, for example, I'm gonna use this here on the opacity and I can just change the behavior of my brush in real time without entering the brush editor or making right click and modify the angle here. Wow! Another interesting feature is if I go to the settings, docker and brush preset history you can see that something is located right here. So I can move this. I have this on my history, but I can go here and remove everything. Um, now I can select. Now you can see that I can have 10 brushes. But if I go here and go to the configuration, the number of brush presets, I can go up to 100 much more in my preset history. If you go with your brush presets docker, you go here, you can navigate with the scroll wheel or one by one with these buttons here. The new thing is that if I go here and start decreasing the size, I have much more brushes, but in a more reduced size. Dragging to the left and you can see everything is available again. And I can do the same in the upper part and adjust and do whatever you want with this menu. Scroll wheel, cursor, menu, fantastic. It has a fantastic way of erasing things because if you are painting like this and you press E, you can erase with the same brush tip and keep the texture of your painting. You can use this button too to activate the painting or erasing action. In Krita 5.2, Krita has added a new way of erasing that separates painting from erasing. Let me show you. If I go to the painting mode, I go here to the settings, configure toolbars, and select here my edit toolbar and look for erase options. To find toggle eraser preset, click here, click OK, and you have available. So now I'm painting, but if I press here, now I am in the eraser that is going to respect the brush I select for the erasing. So if I select 
this, for example, it will erase with this brush. If I toggle this, then I recover my brush for painting. Click here and I have in erasing mode. The best thing about this is that I keep the normal erasing with the E shortcut and I can use my button here to go to my special eraser, click here. But this is tidying, so we can configure a shortcut. So go to the configure Krita and go here to erase options and the toggle eraser preset. I'm going to use the shift E to show you in action. Click OK. And now I am painting I'm shift E and toggle to my erasing brush. And then you have the best of the two worlds combined in Krita. Uh, I think this is fantastic. If this feature is going to help you, just let me know in the comments. Shmita coders have been working really hard to provide you audio support in your animation. So now I can go here and import any kind of audio in this format. So I select this file. My animation will be synchronized with the keyframes. I can go to the first point and you see like the important parts have their respective keyframe. I can create a loop just clicking here and dragging play and that way I'm just replaying this again and again. I can reduce the volume. I can mute and also I can change the speed. Click play and you see <laughs> it's a bit weird. I can slow down also. All type of possibilities. So let me know in the comments please what do you think about this amazing feature. In the previous releases, you needed to look for the FFmpeg file to rendering the animation or recording a time lapse. But now, as you can see here, FFmpeg is included by default. And if I go to File Render Animation, you can see that is already there. So now it's easier to render animations or recording time lapses. Only one single note is that in Android, you can have some restrictions, but maybe when this video is released, this will be fixed. But for PC works perfectly. Rita 5.2 has created this special color selector, which works with SDR images and HDR images. There are important changes, like for example, that now we can see the foreground color and the background color with a single click. We can select the color model really fast, and also we can change the color selector. And the first thing that you have here is the diamond shape that a lot of users were asking for, and also the configuration. We can change this, the dynamic, and dynamic means that if I go to the saturation or change the brightness, the color wheel reacts to that. If I prefer the old way, I can go here and go to the configuration and change to the static, and now everything is like before. There are a new way to see the colors that is the dynamic and static edge. So if you change, you will see the difference because I have the sensible area to the saturation and brightness. And you can see a color ring that show us the hue in each place. So if you like it, let me know in the comments what is the color selector that you are using for your work. I'm really interested because I am a color lover. So thanks for your comments. And now let me show you a very common configuration that we have where, while we are working in projects. I'm painting something and I have my reference in the other monitor on another part of my screen. How can I pick these colors if I want to use these reds or these greens or whatever? We then now have this edit sample screen color and now it's sampling 
everything. I go outside Krita to my other monitor, for example, or my other region in another application. And you can see that now I'm selecting, you can see in the color wheel, the colors that we have here. I have selected green, so I can paint with this green. If I go again, sample color, I can select this green and I have this green is a bit slow. So I can go here to my settings, configure Krita, go to the keyboard shortcuts and right here sample. And in sample screen color, I can use this to select, for example, A. Usually this shortcut is empty. And then I click A and I'm sampling colors, A, and I'm sampling this uh, yellow maybe making zoom A, and that's it. It's very useful, isn't it? If you like the palettes like me, you go here to the palette. You can see that the palette can be arranged in a different way if I go to here and default. Now you can see that if I select, for example, this color and I move by accident to this part, I am just swapping the color I make swapping here and probably I'm picking a color I can move and create a mess. So to prevent that, Krita has coded a new feature, which is the lock feature. And now you can't move these colors inside to another place inside the palette. This little tiny thing here Wow, it's, it's really important. Of course, you can move the colors to the layer dockers and create a fill layer, which is very useful. And But this prevents a lot of headaches. In the future, this palette probably will have even undo and redo. So if you like it, just go and support Krita. Now we can transform several layers at the same time. If I use one layer, and another layer like this, and I want to transform both, I don't need to group them anymore. Control T, and now I can scale, create perspective, or whatever you want. Thanks a lot for this really useful feature in a daily work. Now let me show you an interesting thing about the layers, because these have been changed in the way that we can sew information. If I click in this button, I can control the thumbnail as usual. And you can see the tree indentation. So I can modify this, but nothing is appearing here. What What's wrong with this? Nothing, because I need to have different levels grouping and you can see the difference. Now I can just reduce the tree indentation. And now we have the blending info style, which is giving the info about the blending mode that we use in our layers and or groups. So you can disable and also you can just go for simple, which show you just the uh, percent, the 30% and then blending mode name, or you can go for balance or you can go for detail. In detail, every layer has the blending mode name. So you can see that this layer, which is not activated, is using the normal, and this is normal, and this is a screen. So I can have a lot of information. I can modify this. I go to the inline, and I have the information after the name. But this forced me to have a layer docker just bigger than usual. So you decide. We can control the opacity of this new data. I normally use 75% because I don't want to have um, not too visible, but not too similar. And then we have the checkbox for selecting layers, which is very useful if you're using Krita in a tablet. By default, it's checked. So now I can select layers just clicking here. But if you are in a desktop, you can disable, click one layer and control or command and click and you select another layer, click one layer 
and press shift and click in another one and you select the layers in between. Krita detects what pixel is affected by this position. How can I select the blue layer from this pixel? There is a trick. If I go to the settings, configure Krita and go to the canvas input settings, go to the select layer and create a new shortcut. Select the mouse button and here select right click or left click. In this case, I'm going to use the left and here I'm going to select the S key. Select from menu, replace selection. If I press S, in this pixel, Krita is detecting that is content in the red layer, in the green layer and the blue layer. It's impressive. Right now, this only works with mouse. I have tried different combinations. So if you find another interesting combination, let me know in the comments. Imagine you want to create a seamless landscape for a video game. If I go to the view, I can use the wrap around mode, but with the direction select if I want to vertically, horizontally, or both directions. And I go to here, wrap, just painting the parts that I want to modify. And I can remove the seams in the X axis. This will be tileable, fast, easy, and good. If you go to settings and toolbar zone, you can see that there's edit, it's a third bar. And that means that we can change, uh, for example, to have this here and this here and modify them as I did with my secondary toolbar and fill this with comments if you need it. Love it. In Krita 5.2, we have a new feature in the tablet settings because if I open the tablet tester, you can see that TX and TY which means that you have the tilt information available while I'm choosing in this tablet testing area. It show me the TX and the Y and also the pressure and speed. So I can verify a lot of data for my own use. Shruta wants to provide you the best, not only for Latin language, but for Japan, Chinese, Arabic, and everything related with top to bottom and right to left writing. The final goal, it will be implement this on Canvas tool for Krita 5.3. So please support us to make this possible. You can see here a list of the features that Krita is working on. As you can read here, you still have to use the SVG code editor to access these new features. Well, have you seen that? I think this is amazing. So if you want to be grateful, just support Krita. And if you want to stay tuned with this type of videos, then subscribe and activate the notifications by 